Land degradation, deforestation, and subsequent desertification are becoming some of the most pressing development issues in Nigeria. 43% of the total land area of the country is threatened by desertification. The livelihoods of over 40 million people are also under severe threat. As estimated, desertification in Nigeria destroys about 2,168 square kilometers of rangeland and cropland each year. To address the above phenomena holistically at the regional level, the African Union came up with an initiative. The Great Green Wall program um, came out as a result of the international community's intention and desire to combat land degradation in drylands of this uh, um, in Africa in particular. Um, it came uh, as a result of the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, which Nigeria and many other African countries are signatory to. Um, the program is actually centered on establishing a stretch of green area across the African continent, uh, starting from uh, Senegal in the western coast of Africa, and then the Horn of Africa. Uh, a total of 11 countries are now members of that uh, organization. It's a pan-African uh, initiative. And uh, as I said, it's aimed at getting our people living in dry lands out of the situation they find themselves. Uh, one of the major um, uh, issues that confronts Africa in terms of food security is uh, land degradation. And um, uh, the idea is to get back the land to productivity. Um, it, came, it became more obvious when climate change came in. Uh, as you know, climate change is a, if the, uh, is a very new phenomenon as far as the environment is concerned uh, and has altered a lot of uh, land-based uh, activities, especially agriculture. Um, hitherto, farmers can predict when rain will fall, when it will cease, how much rain they feel they expect, and therefore they don't need to be told when to plant. Things are no longer like that. And so even the Great Green Program has now to be, the approach has to be redesigned in order for it to capture the impacts of climate change and, uh, in the region. It's Bachaka a town in Arewa local government area of Kebe State. Uh, Bachaka, where we're standing here is just about a kilometer to, or less than a kilometer to the boundary between Nigeria and Niger Republic. And uh, this is exactly where the flag of ceremony has taken place. Great Green Wall uh, actually is a program that was initiated by Nigeria. It was initially supposed to be confined in Nigeria, but it was widened to cover about 11 countries, beginning from Djibouti through to Senegal which uh, these 11 countries have actually uh, involved themselves into this program, but it was initiated in Nigeria. In Nigeria, the program is being implemented in 11 states most affected by desertification. These states include Adamawa, Bauchi, Borno, Gombe, Jigawa, Kano, Katsina, Kebi, Sokoto, Yobe, and Zampara. I think um, we have to cast our mind back. Before Great Green World, what were Africans, particularly those in sub-Saharan African countries, are doing? Um, it has been a haphazard approach by individual countries. And even in the countries, if you take Nigeria for instance, what the people in the Northwest were doing, uh, in areas like Sokoto, Kebri, Zafara, were different approaches from what was obtained in Kano, Sokoto, and Yobi, for example. And that haphazard does not help anybody. The, 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 what the Great Green World has brought to us, as the people in Africa in particular, is an approach that we do it collectively. In other words, what we are doing in one country, depending upon the specificity of our ecosystems, is what is applicable in other countries. And therefore, we can, that provides an opportunity for one country to learn from the other, 
or one region to learn from the other what they have done and they have been successful and of course other countries to correct their mistakes and this is very good because at the end of the day you will have a um, um, you will have a collective approach to the issue rather than the haphazard issues we have been had before so it's a very good thing that uh, we find ourselves in that position because we are finding one single monster together with all our resources, with all our efforts together in order for us to take us to the next level in terms of uh, uh, combating land degradation in the region. Populations in these states are the most vulnerable to climatic variability and land degradation. The people of these states depend heavily on the fragile ecosystems for rain-fed agriculture, fisheries and livestock management to sustain their livelihoods. These constitute the primary sectors of employment in the states. About two-thirds of Nigeria's livestock and over 80% of vegetable requirement are sourced from this area, hence occupying a unique economic position of over 150 million people. Let me try to divide the population into two. You and I, the elites, the policymakers, and the people in the communities who are daily receiving uh, the brunt of uh, land degradation. These are two different peoples under the same issue. You and I, it's easy for us to read in the papers, to watch the television and listen to radio and know about Great Green Wall. What about the people in the communities? We have to go to them, to them. We have to go and tell them what it is. We have to find a way of getting them to key in into the project, otherwise the project will not succeed. And what have we achieved for now in that direction? We have been able to inform the, the policymakers that we need to direct our policies towards land combating land degradation in the north. It is happening, yes, maybe you can say it's happening in northern Sokoto. Um, how does it affect the money in River State? It does. Because if I'm living in Sokoto State and I don't have a means of livelihood, I'll move down south. And because of the death of uh, social amenities in this, even in the urban areas and semi urban areas, the more you get people there, the more pressure on the little you're providing. And therefore, the impact will even affect those people you met. Um, uh, stay in those areas. So it is a global thing that affects everybody. And the first people who must know about and who should adequately know about are the communities. Who are these communities? The communities are the people who are living their daily living from this degrading land. It's a continuous process. And the idea is let's wage the movement. In other words, you wage the movement of the degradation down south because it's coming from Sahara. And then now you go and recover what you have lost. That is the ultimate aim and objective of the Great Green Wall Program. Once you reclaim, the farmer will get back. I can recall that years back, some few decades ago, when people are talking, were talking about herdsmen and farmers' clash, it wasn't there. It wasn't there because we knew that the cattle coming from as far as uh, uh, northern Africa, Sudan, the extreme western part of uh, West Africa, from the Guinea, Guinea highlands, they come and move on a particular route down to the Benue Trough, as far as back to Akwa Ibom, up to Edo State. And they come both through the same way. What are we facing today? What we are facing today is this corridor of movement has been taken over by farmers. Why are farmers taking over the corridors? Because where they were farming before have been degraded. So in other words, once you reclaim the degraded area, you are solving so many problems. Because when, the, when, some, when, when you look at the map of Nigeria 20, 30 years ago, you find cattle root very clearly. Now where are they? Nowhere to be found. And we also want to, we must understand also that the population has grown. And when there's a population pressure, everybody will go out and look for a piece of land. In those days, a farmer will farm his piece of land this year and will not do it in the next two, three years to enable the land rec rec I mean, rec uh, recover. Now he doesn't have that luxury. He doesn't have that luxury of allowing his farms fallow to recover because of population, because of land degradation, because of climate change. Name it. And the idea is all these uh, issues I raised are supposed to be taken care of through the Great Green Program. But everybody must participate. The farmer must have accepted. The farmer must provide land for this work to do. The farmer must participate. The farmer must see that yes, this is the way out of his own. Uh, problem he's facing today and then we can move forward and achieve what we want to achieve. Operational activities include establishment of shelter belt and woodlot plantations, provision of water and rural infrastructure, skill acquisition and employment generation. We've got a lot of benefits. You see even women are into the dry season farming. And here you can find lettuce, carrots, watermelon, 
and every other crop that could be planted during the dry season farming. Before now, we could not access water. Everywhere was dry, but now we plant crops with so much ease, such as Moringa and the rest of them, and we benefit a lot from the crops. What could we do at that time, since there was no water? Not everybody could withstand the task of fetching water from the well. But now that we've got these boreholes, even old and married women usually come out to water their crops. Around 5 to 6 p.m. they go back home. They go to the farm every day to apply fertilizer to their farms. You see, if they were not benefiting, they wouldn't have been coming out. It's been about four years now. We've been enjoying constant water supply here. The water is being used by both people and animals. If it were in the morning you came here, you would have seen about 500 different animals, rams, cows, camels and so on. They come every day to drink water from here. You see, people from neighboring villages abandon their wells and come here to fetch water. In fact, because of the availability of boreholes here, all the wells have long been closed. Over 600 kilometers of shelter belt established. Over 300 hectare community orchard plantation established. Over 200 hectare community woodlot established. 22 hectare community vegetable gardening to enhance food security and reduce social unrest developed and promoted. 157 solar-powered boreholes with reticulation facilities benefiting over 40,000 people, 498 youth trained and engaged as forest guards, training of 200 rural women in different off-farm skills such as knitting, soap and perfume making, fabrication of energy-saving cooking stoves to enhance their livelihood. Yes, there's nothing you can start to do without challenges. Even at the family level, you want to do something, you find challenges left, right and center. And you sit down with your family members and try to find a solution to it. It's exactly like that. Nigeria or the northern Nigeria where we operate is a community full of communities. It's a collection of peoples, if you want to, you know what I mean. Different social, social backgrounds, different cultural backgrounds, even though they may speak the same language. Now, the challenge here is not necessarily money, because when you, go, when you talk of government, the first they tell you money. I don't believe money is the first challenge. The first challenge is for the people who are the target group to appreciate that this is a solution to what the, the problem they are facing. And then when they accept and they key in, then the first challenge is solved. Let me give you an example. As far as 2013 when we started, there was a project we went somewhere and we planted seedlings, sorry, tree seedlings. The following day, the farmers pull it out and throw it away. Because one, that land belongs to somebody. Now, if government doesn't go to the owner of the land and say, look, I want to do A, B, C, D, and this is the benefit you get from this land, please drain me, let's do it together. He won't agree, because uh, this is his, father, his family land, and he's waiting for the rains to come for him to go and plant his, uh, his crop. So key in of the communities is the number one issue. Now, what are the challenges? The communities have, don't have the, they don't have the capacity to do what they want, you want them to do in order for you to get results. And therefore, if you want capacity, you have to bring in the government. Fortunately, we have three types of government. The closest, the close, and the far. The federal government, the state, and the local government. Now, the first uh, tier of government you want to key in, given the way we operate, is the state government. Key in is more than meeting the governor or the commission and say, yes, we agree we are going to do it. No. We must get a commitment, and that commitment means what? Part of their budget should go into this program so that they can partner the federal government in doing their job. That way, you'll be able to enable them to own of that project. Anything less than that is the federal government project. Yes, it's a federal government project. Yes, it is true, federal government doesn't have land anywhere outside Abuja and Lagos. So you need to go through the state government to get the land, to get their buy-in, to get them to spend the money on it and get the community enlightened and build their capacity whether it's for them to key in. To me, these are the major challenges. And then once you have done that, the issue of money, the issue of human resources, the challenges may come in. But primarily, 
is for the people concerned to buy in the project and take off the project and own it. And as I said earlier, so we have started with the communities. We want the government, the state government, all the 11 state governments to come in. One or two states have expressed their desire to join the program, which is a good news. It means people are appreciating that there's good results coming out of that. Not necessarily Governor of KB State. Governor of Lagos State, he needs to accept that there's a program like that. You know, because they do go to their forums, they talk about it, and you can convince one or two people and say, look, yes, I learned this program is happening in your place. Please buy it in. It's good. It will at least reduce the movement of people from your state to Lagos to come and do menial jobs, which to anybody appears like a waste of human resources. So accept it. Once you accept it, that human resource will go back to your place and add to the development of your state. So my, 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 my first general comment is to plead with the media, whether it's the print media or it is uh, the electronic media, to please work with us and tell Nigerians what we are doing and tell Nigerians what they need to do in order to help us to achieve our objectives. National Agency for the Great Green Wall, transforming Nigerian dry land.